for joining us for the PathGuide webinar, and I'm going to turn it over to Rebecca Tongs from PathGuide to get us started. Please take it away, Rebecca. Thanks, Gary. Appreciate that. And a big welcome to everyone on the call today. My name is Rebecca Tongs, and I'm the Marketing Communications Manager at PathGuide Technologies, and I'll be helping to facilitate today's webinar. I'm joined by four other folks representing PathGuide, and here we are starting with Keith Lalonde, who is the Vice President of Systems. Next, we have Erica Lay, our President and CEO. That's me, Rebecca Tonks, Marketing Communications Manager. And we've got Tom Sweeney and Mark Van Leeuwen. These are our Regional Sales Managers. Like Gary had stated, in the GoToWebinar control panel, located to the right of your screen, you'll see a section for questions. Feel free to submit questions at any time throughout the webinar because we have allocated a few minutes at the end of today's presentation to run through them. We do have limited time and there are quite a few of you on the call today, so if we don't get to your questions, rest assured we'll get back to you on an individual basis with an answer in the next couple of days. So just for fun, why don't you type your name and where you're joining us from and I'll do kind of a shout out to a few of you out there. Feel free to do that in the chat log. Oh, not seeing anybody come up just yet. People are shy. Oh, looks like we've got a mic from Louisville, Kentucky. Welcome, Mike. We've got Mark from California. Welcome, Mark. Dennis from uh, Oxford, Michigan, looks like. All right, well, I'm now going to turn the time over to Keith Lalonde, with whom you're in very capable hands, because Keith joined PathGuide in 1997 as a software engineer and he spent his early years contributing to the design and growth of Latitude WMS. As Vice President of Systems, Keith works directly with our sales guys to better understand customer requirements and to further uh, the product development. And with that, the time is now yours, Keith. Take it away. Thank you, Rebecca, very much. Appreciate the, uh, the introductions and Gary for organizing uh, today's um, webinar. Um, I've, I'm very excited to be speaking today. Um, as Rebecca mentioned in my role here at PathGuide Technologies, I spend a great deal of time working not only with existing customers, uh, some warehouse automation professionals, business partners, uh, but also potential new customers supporting the sales team. And we do that in an effort to keep a pulse on the direction that warehousing is going and, and how it's changing. Um, in working very close with the sales team, prospective customers, and so forth, uh, we continually run into common themes uh, that you know all distributors are up against, uh, and ultimately it almost always boils down to how they can set themselves apart from their competition. What types of value adds can people do? I, people find that uh, it's really tough to beat you know competitors on price and things like that. So it really gets down to service and other value adds uh, that is going to help someone stand out not only maintain but actually grow their market share. Uh, and in this day and age, they need to do it even faster, more efficient, um, and at, at higher levels of accuracy. And what we do see is you know, you run into companies that are content with just status quo operations. It's the way we've always done it. It's the way we'll keep doing it tomorrow. And in reality, what's happening is those people continue to fall farther and farther behind the competition, which is why I'm so excited to talk about today uh, the four ways that smart distributors are using their WMS to deliver a better, a better customer experience. Um, to begin with, it starts uh, with uh, some of my examples start with ways to give better visibility uh, to a customer's order status. And so uh, the first example that comes to mind is uh, King Architectural Metals. They're uh, still an artistic metal distributor uh, headquartered in Mesquite, Texas, and they've got uh, warehousing operations in Baltimore and Los Angeles. Um, but specifically, they have very active, busy uh, customer showrooms and front counter areas. And they were looking for a way that they could improve the customer experience uh, while they were, uh, while a customer was waiting, both in the line to get helped, and then ultimately while they were waiting for their order, 
And so what they did is they decided to put up a big screen monitor above the, uh, the counter area. And so after they placed their order, they could actually see that order pop up on the screen, see that an individual uh, began picking it, and monitor the progress on how long it was going to take uh, until their order was going to be brought up to the front counter. And what they found is that really lowered any you know, question and animosity about how long is it going to take for my order. And uh, so that satisfied the customer need. And, and equally is important to, to King themselves on the productivity side, what that actually allowed them to do was the, the uh, counter person could automatically go right to the next customer in line, begin taking that order, and it just really streamlined that whole process. So they, they saw they could get more orders uh, taken at the counter. Uh, they eliminated uh, what they used to do is the counter person often themselves would go back in the warehouse and pick an order, and the people in line would wait, and it just wasn't optimal. And so they were able to tackle that. Um, another example of that is a, a local Seattle uh, customer of ours called Fishery Supply, and they were looking for a way to get a, a better handle on customer will calls and that whole pickup process. Uh, you know, often they had uh, times where customers would, uh, uh, you know, park in the parking lot, phone in their order, say it was a will call, and then you know walk in the door five minutes later, kind of expecting their order. Or worse yet, you know, orders would get placed. They were well called, you know, if the person needed it today, and by and large, you know, ultimately too often the customer never actually showed up to, to pick up the material. And so they got uh, uh, really creative. It's one of the more creative solutions that, uh, uh, that I've uh, heard in this area. What they decided to do was to, to, uh, to begin sending an automated text uh, when a will call order was done getting picked and staged for the customer to pick up. So, um, you know, out in the warehouse, you know, Johnny's picking an order, picks the last item. Uh, the WMS tells him he's done. He takes it up. Uh, he knows it's a will call. Uh, he stages it to a bin, and boom, text message goes out to the customer. This is your order is now ready to be picked up. Now, it didn't take very long for the customers to get trained on this new process. So um, instead of just, you know, Sure, some of them may sit out on the parking lot, but by and large, customers themselves were more productive because they knew they were going to get a notification, so maybe they could grab lunch or do something else before picking up that order. So they were more productive. Um, excuse me. But then additionally, um, that also served as a reminder to those customers where one person from an organization called in an order and somebody else needed to pick up. Uh, that person was getting the text message so they wouldn't forget uh, that they had an order there. So a higher percentage of their will call orders actually went through. And then lastly, uh, part of the fishery supply solution, in their will call area, they identified which of their customers were the best of the best of their um, clients. And when a person, when the picker went to stage one of those orders, uh, they were directed to place it in a very specific bin, and those bins reserved for the, the best customers, they actually allowed the customer to just walk in, uh, uh, punch in you know, uh, their customer ID, and then see where their order was. They went and grabbed it and walked out. They didn't have to wait in line for a counter person. They didn't have to sign anything. And uh, that, picked, uh, you know, that uh, improved the performance in that area for them as well. All right, uh, other um, areas where people are um, getting a handle on things um, uh, it comes in the form of, you know, what happens when an order has uh, been picked and shipped out, most commonly like a common carrier. So we have a, um, a large electrical distributor, uh, one of the larger ones in the nation. They're headquartered in Dallas. And um, they wanted to, to match and try to actually exceed what customers have grown to expect when an order is picked, packed, and shipped out. What I mean by that is uh, right now I think we all expect when we place an order online from someone, Amazon or anyone like that, almost right away you get a message that says thank you for your order, uh, you know, an email message, thank you for your order, and so forth. And then that's shortly followed by a message that says, you know, we appreciate your business, your order is shipped, and here's your tracking number. And so they went ahead and implemented that strategy but then took it a bit farther. So using uh, you know, latitude for, for uh, WMS and shipping, 
uh, we actually monitor and the customers uh, themselves can receive notifications about the progress of an order right up to the point where uh, you know the UPS or FedEx truck is going to be delivering it today and then an hour later two hours later whatever uh, here's the confirming uh, email that says your order was delivered it was left on the front porch or it was left in the managers you know office wh whatever may apply for that and so they're able to do that and uh, keep better control of um, uh, better visibility as to where those customer orders are in the delivery um, cycle. All right, uh, moving on to, to number two, making it um, uh, easier to uh, order product. I'd like to focus on uh, vendor managed uh, inventory, and so that continues to grow for, for many people. Um, uh, we have a customer who is exceptionally heavily heavy into VMI. They're another electrical distributor, EB Horseman and Sons, and they're located just across the Canadian border in Surrey, British Columbia. And what they were doing was, uh, what they decided to do was to look how they could grow that service to their customers. And they came up with some very creative ways. Um, uh, one of the more common ones is, uh, you know, staffing uh, actual tool cribs at a, at a manufacturing site. Uh, but another thing they implemented was they actually began loading up trailers and driving them to job sites and then you know sell orders you know right out of the back of the uh, the job site um, uh, trailer. Uh, they still do other modes of VMI as well. The traditional model where the the salesman uh, visits a customer site, takes an inventory, you know uh, on a on the wireless device or their you know Android phone or whatever, uh, and then when they're done, they hit the done button. Customers get an email: your order's on the way, and they're out to jump in their car, drive to their next customer site uh, to step and repeat with that. And then um, uh, in some cases, uh, again, looking at their, you know, uh, the best of the best customers, uh, I mean, the, the VMI app is so easy, they actually simply supply the device to the customer themselves, and they go through and they manage doing their, their you know, own inventory levels or, um, uh, you know, uh, scan the, uh, taking the device and scanning the orders and building the replenishment order themselves. Uh, so some really cool stuff there. Some other things that people are doing to make uh, it easier for them to do uh, order entry is uh, automated order uh, entry programs like web portals or simply having their location set up in the WMS, uh, managing um, you know expected usages and determining when it's appropriate to uh, build an order, run that through the system, uh, through the ERP, back down, pick, pack, and ship, and send it out to the uh, customer themselves. Um, the next example I'd like to move into are some things that people are doing on the uh, shipping side of things, uh, what types of programs and incentives. Love the carrot out there, dangle that out there for people. Again, we're looking at, you know, what can we do to make a customer feel better about, uh, you know, uh, placing an order with us. So one thing uh, in this next example comes from Cascade, Cascade Orthopedic Supply. They're located in Chico, California. They're actually all across the United States with warehouses in Chicago, Irving, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and, and Quebec, Canada. Uh, but they got real creative on uh, the rules that they would have for shipping. And one of their most popular ones is, you know, orders that meet certain criteria. They ship them out next day. Uh, but they only charge the customer for the actual ground rate that that would be. And so if your shipping solution, you know, can have that type of rule, looking to take an advantage of that, it's very well received. Uh, and that's, that's one of the things that um, the, the Latitude system will do for them um, as well. Um, another example that people do is they uh, extend order cutoff times. And many of you may have this. Um, real common, place your order, you know, by three, it'll ship the same day. And, um, um, you know, I really like this uh, example uh, in that um, we have a customer, it's kind of near and dear to my heart, uh, located in Dallas, Texas, a plant's parts distributor. And I get excited about this example because um, way back in the day, and I'm not going to say how long that day was, but way back in the day I did that implementation myself. And that, at that time, they didn't have a WMS. They were going in for the first time with this. Uh, they had two shipping stations, all manual processes, two shipping stations. 
they were shipping uh, around 450 uh, parcels a day. And people were routinely staying until like uh, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock at night. And at the time of their implementation, they guaranteed if a customer placed the order by 1 p.m., it would ship the same day. And so they got the WMS in, up and running, and uh, within a year of being live on the system, what they found is that they were able to extend that promise. And their cutoff is now order in by five, ship same day. Uh, they increased their parcel count. Uh, they average over 600 parcels a day. That's a, that's a pretty substantial growth. They eliminated one of the shipping lines. So everything goes through down a single line now. And they have virtually eliminated any uh, overtime labor in the shipping. People are routinely done, packed up, called it a day by 6, 6.30 in the evening. And so that's a, that's a very cool uh, uh, success story. All right, moving into uh, uh, the fourth uh, item of topic, demanding warehouse and the excellence. What I'd like to say is one thing that in every one of the prior examples, the different companies, the one thing that they all have in common is their view on their distribution uh, environment and their desire uh, and their push for excellence uh, uh, in that area. So um, the areas I want to talk about, uh, you know, pushing for air free orders, uh, complete and accurate paperwork, on time shipments and deliveries, and raising the, uh, uh, the idea of this uh, uh, perfect order uh, metric. So what I'd like to do, whoops, let me uh, go back for, for just a second. So, um, you know, when it comes to determining how an order is, um, uh, you know, what percentage of orders your organization or an, or an organization is being pushed out, there's this concept of, uh, of the perfect order. And some of you may have heard this, but on the screen I've got a long definition and you can go through and read it, but basically it's what percentage of your orders are, are getting delivered to the right place with the right product on time in the, cus in the condition the customer expects um, with you know, all of the accurate uh, paperwork. And so that's the concept of a, uh, of a perfect order. And so on the screen, I have a simplified version of this. And the question I would like to pose to the group, and uh, probably some kudos here for the, the, the you know, person that can uh, answer this, type that message in the box. If an organization is shipping 95% of their orders complete, and 95% of their orders on time, and 95% of them with all of the accurate and correct documentation, that would include labels and things like that, and they're air-free, mistake-free, right items, right quantities, and so forth, what percentage of their orders are they actually shipping uh, perfect? And Rebecca, if you see somebody pop up uh, the answer on that, but, um, I'd like to just give a few seconds for that. But I'd like to see if anybody can get that. Okay, I've got uh, a couple of answers. I've got 80%, 81%. That is fantastic. So those are those are actually uh, basically right on the mark. So uh, the correct answer is, is if you take 95 percent, which is 0 0.95, 95 percent times 95 percent times 95 percent times 95 percent is 81.4 percent. And so uh, who gave the uh, the closest answer there? The 81 percent. Let's give that person some kudos. <laughs> that was our very own Mark Van Leeuwen. Oh, Mark. <laughs> hey, that's yeah. Who gave 80? Uh, Mike, that. Mike, great job, Matt. I expect Mark to get that one right every time. But um, so uh, yeah, eighty-one percent. So um, gosh, just imagine that for just a second. Um, how could you know what would a company president or CEO? What do you think uh, they would think? Do you think they'd be disappointed if knowing that only eighty-one percent of their orders that they were shipping out were spot-on correct? Uh, that's an that's an interesting question there. All right. So what's the uh, best way to ensure excellence in warehousing and distribution? Um, the short answer is that it, it starts with the desire for operational excellence. And the best way to get that is to begin viewing the, the warehouse uh, and distribution as a profession itself. What we find is that the best run warehouses and distribution centers realize the need for exceptionally competent, qualified individuals overseeing those area of, uh, areas of operations, whether it's 
whether it's a smaller operation, you know, with a with a top-notch, you know, warehouse individual or VP of operations and distribution and so forth. And when I talk about this, I'm just not talking about our customers and how they're successful, but even even accounts that we might not win. Uh, you know, those exceptional people, that's the view that they have uh, on that. So having a professional involved, in, and people may know this, they may not, but colleges like Michigan State, uh, Texas A&M, uh, and other universities out there, I mean, they, they have degrees in this, uh, you know, BS degrees, master degrees in supply chain management, operational excellence, and other distribution centers. I mean, this is, this is a, a big deal, and it leads into my next bullet, is that the reasons that, you know, the Amazons and the Walmarts and, and the real big players out there have a completely different perspective from, from you know, a, a less focused, you know, mom and pop and, and we've always done it this way, we still will do it this way type thing, um, is because they view their operations, their warehouses, um, in a different uh, light. Now, uh, people have probably heard the term cost centers and, and, uh, and prof, uh, profit centers as well. Uh, if you have great, if you have not. Uh, a cost center, that's where you just kind of view a warehouse as the necessary evil. And uh, in reality, a bunch of money is just sitting on the shelves out there, right? A lot of money, uh, depending on uh, how much uh, inventory a person is holding it in, in, at, at any one time. Um, but uh, you can also view that as a profit center. And when you think about all of the promises that, that your marketing and branding go to or that a salesperson uh, is making, especially if a customer is placing an order, an order and it's critical that it get delivered on time, all of that stuff hinges on you know, the person in the warehouse. They're the last person you know, to touch that order. They're the last ones that have an opportunity to make sure that that happens correctly, you know, all of the time. And so that's kind of a big deal. When it comes to IT initiatives uh, and return on investment, um, you know, what we have found is that, uh, you know, uh, projects like uh, WMS systems and warehouse automation, uh, those have the, the largest payback of any other IT initiative out there. And when people look at that, and when they look at how they can streamline, um, uh, you know, work more efficiently, um, always get the order right, and those types of things, when it comes to ringing, you know, profit and growing profit, the biggest opportunity to do that is in the warehouse or is uh, is in the distribution center. And and when people see that, and that's their view, and then they begin looking at those opportunities, the warehouse is no longer a cost center. It is now a profit center, uh, and that's kind of a key thing. And and I would imagine that uh, you might agree with me that CFO they they probably would be real excited if there was an opportunity to to grow margins and things like that simply by improving the operations out there. All right. Um, so how do people you know improve operations? Um, uh, one. Uh, exceptional way to do that is to begin looking at and rewarding for uh, employee performance, uh, both uh, individual and uh, and team based. And I'd like to share an example of what I mean by uh, team based. Um, uh, it's important to recognize people you know that do well. But one of our customers, a customer located in Spokane, Washington, their Jensen Distribution Services, uh, brief background: they operate roughly 500,000 square feet. Uh, have uh, 150 workers across multiple shifts, uh, and their operations are almost 24/7. Uh, not co not quite. But what they found is that um, if they set up a program that uh, rewarded individuals, but that relied on an individual's team to meet their minimum standards as well, uh, their overall performance um, went up dramatically. So it wasn't just enough. Uh, for Johnny to, to you know meet the standards or exceed the standards he has uh, for for picking orders, you know he has five members on his team. They all need to hit their goal as well so that the team hits the goal. And what they found is instead of it being every man for themselves out there, all of a sudden the staff is collectively helping people. So if if somebody's you know standing in the aisle and they're they're hitting their RF terminal, you know, button a couple of times, and they're looking puzzled. 
it's actually now in my best interest to stop and help them if I can uh, so that they can get back to work. And so collectively, uh, that just really helped everybody work together and they saw some incredible gains in employee productivity. Uh, and accuracy as well. Accuracy is definitely uh, a key player in that. All right. Uh, last bullet that I have up on here is striving to be, you know, best in class. And that's that's kind of a fancy uh, term. Uh, when I talk about being best in class and, and needing to, you know, striving for that, what I'm really talking about is finding out and determining how you stack up against, you know, your competitors uh, when it comes to warehousing and, and distribution. And so I'd like to talk briefly for a second about the Warehousing Education and Resource Council. Many of you may have heard of that. The, the acronym is WORK. They're considered the Association for Logistics and Warehousing Professionals. And they do a bunch of stuff. But what they do is they study warehousing and logistics. And they go into warehouses. And they do surveys. And they hear back from the professionals in the industry uh, to really help provide all of the data points so that uh, uh, people like yourselves can find out where you actually stack up against other people in similar industries and, and, uh, and so forth. And so before I move to the next slide, I wanted to pose the following question. Uh, there's not necessarily in any right or wrong answer on this, but I'm curious. Um, of, the, of the following that I've got listed on the screen, what, uh, what is or might be the most important to your uh, organization? In the four uh, examples, order accuracy, how important, you know, uh, how important is that? On-time shipments, employee productivity, or maybe you have something that is you know, the most important to you is not on the list. Rebecca, maybe you'd shout out one or two that come in there uh, as to what people uh, find or believe is the most important in their organization. Sure, we'll give uh, folks a few minutes to think about that and chime in. Is, I mean, are KPIs and warehouse metrics important? Is it important to know where you're at compared to anybody else? And if so, you know, you know, why is that it? Uh, why is that important? No, no answers. I've got an answer. I've got uh, C. Okay, employee productivity. Um, gosh, the salesmen, we hear that all the time uh, on on sales calls uh, for sure. People want to be more product uh, productivity. When, uh, when you think of uh, ROI uh, on an investment like a WMS, uh, it's real easy to think about, okay, how many hours of labor will I save if, if we're on a WMS? And definitely, you know, that's straightforward math. Uh, your closer analysis, key things are, you know, don't lose your, your biggest customer, right? What, uh, you, what would happen if you lost your biggest customer, your top three customers, or, or so forth? Um, but... Uh, um, you know, order accuracy is definitely important. Uh, any, anybody else chime in there, Rebecca? We do. We have one more from Dennis. Um, he answered E, all of the above. They, they, all, they are all important. Uh, a good question. Every year, uh, work um, puts together, uh, you know, a listing of the top 12 uh, warehousing metrics that are uh, of importance to people that are out there. And so, um, you know, uh, the examples that people answered uh, are, are actually on the list itself. Um, you know, the number one uh, time, and, and what we're looking at here is in order of, uh, of, in order of popularity, uh, the most uh, important thing is on-time shipments. And the uh, dash customer means here is because that directly impacts the customer. And what we're looking at here is that was the number one KPI for 2014 for 2015, and this is for last year, 2016 as well. Now, um, we, we talked about order accuracy. I think that was the first answer that, that popped up there. Uh, that always stays in the top half of the list. It uh, has kind of varied. Last couple years, it was actually down. Uh, it's uh, popped back up to number three. Uh, order pickering, you know, accuracy. If you get back to that slide that I had on the per perfect order uh, uh, index, uh, you know that that was definitely a key part on it, on there. There's a bunch of other ones that um, uh, you know, doctor stock and, and order cycle times and things like that. One that was really interesting uh, to me. I'm sorry, the one I've highlighted is accuracy. Uh, that was definitely important. The one that I found interesting was 
the actual employee productivity. Now, currently, work uh, that you know they list out uh, you know lines in in uh, picked and shipped per hour, and uh, one of these days that's going to make it uh, you know down to the actual employee itself. Isn't yet there because most people don't actually have the tools to go in and look at where they're at on an employee level basis, and that's one of the things that's been so well received about. The, uh, the the metrics in the latitude WMS is that once you know you're at uh, 50 you know lines picked and shipped per per hour okay that's great now who's how does that break down by employee and where are the opportunities to go in and look at that but uh, anyway the reason it's so interesting to me is that uh, yeah when we talk to, to potentially new customers and we ask what's important to them oh productivity is always important but in the list of respondents of which uh, a, a large number of them are, are upper level senior management, uh, you know, the presidents, the CIOs and, and directors and stuff, you know, they, they actually list those differently. So anyway, that's just a, a very interesting uh, uh, metric to myself. All right, so, um, you know, find your favorite metric and, and where is it at that's on there. Uh, the other thing that work does is they actually will break those metrics down and let you know where people actually fall. And so what we're looking at and I'm going to hone in on order picking accuracy, uh, you know, getting the order right. What we're looking at is they'll break it down by the the, the, quintile, the quintiles, 20%, uh, you know, the bottom 20%, the next 20%, uh, the average 20% above, and then, of course, the best of the best. And on one of my prior slides, I talked about striving to be best of the best, striving to be the top 20% of all of your competition that's doing um, uh, you know, uh, that's in the same line of uh, business that you guys are in. Um, again, I'm not going to break down all the different ones, but what I would like to point out is that uh, looking at the uh, order picking accuracy, the, the margins that separate the best of the best from the next group to the next group to the worst, right, those margins continue to get tighter and tighter every year. And if we look at order picking accuracy as an example, if you're not 99.6% accurate, you know you're you're not in the top 40%. All right, and so um, uh, and you'll see that the top the top 20%, 99 almost 99.9% .9 accurate on their shipments. If somebody's out there and they find they're at like 98%, well, 98 that's pretty 98 is pretty good. Well, actually, you know, I'm sorry to 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 inform you, but that's actually not very good at all. If a person is shipping less than 99% accurate, uh, that would place that company way at the bottom. And so the key takeaway from something like this, again, you know, find out where you're at and how you stack up. Because if, if, the, if the operations aren't moving forward, all right, there's a real good chance that, that you're falling behind. And so um, you know, take that for, for what that uh, is worth. Um, at this point, I've reached uh, the point where I'd like to kind of open it up for uh, any questions from the audience itself. Let's start out with this one, Keith. How do you get warehouse workers to better embrace a warehouse excellence initiative? Uh, that's a great question. So one of the, the key things is to get people involved along the way. Uh, and have buy-in, and, and that has to be relative to their their role. If we're talking about, uh, you know, the, the the people driving around on the fork trucks and clocking in and, and going out, uh, clocking out at the end of the day, they'll be motivated, uh, you know, in, in different ways. Um, implementing, you know, a fair and um, you know, in a, a fair incentive program that's actually meaningful, right? Uh, awarding somebody an extra ten cents an hour probably that not that exciting. Uh, but what if that were an extra dollar an hour? Um, again, if you, if you go back to looking at changing the perception of the environment, uh, when those are viewed in a very professional way, then those roles tend to get filled by people of similar thinking, and, uh, thinking as well. So for example, uh, the warehouse is no longer a dead-end job for people. And, in other words, people are actually experienced and valued and um, you know, it, it actually means something to, to be one of the more accurate, productive workers. And then uh, what people find when they start doing things like that 
is that um, uh, the most valuable employees stay, uh, the most productive employees stay, and then the ones that might not care at the level that you would want them to care, uh, they actually will begin to weed themselves out. So uh, again, share the goals, um, get the buy-in, get people involved uh, through that. Our most successful WMS uh, implementations uh, is one where management has has recognized the need to be more accurate, to be more efficient, and so forth. But in that decision-making process, they actually bring in the, the different groups, you know, right down to the warehouse worker. Hey, what tools would you like to see uh, to help you do your job more uh, efficiently and so forth that will help us meet those goals? When there's buy-in across the board, then, then technology gets embraced and uh, the, the attitude stay positive. Keith, we have another great question from the audience. Okay. Any tools available for EDI-based labels for big box retail customers? So, so that's a, a fantastic one. So if you're doing, uh, uh, you know, fulfillment for, gosh, uh, you know, some, somebody like, uh, you know, perhaps Walmart or something like that, you know, they want uh, the, the EDI transactions going through. And so uh, what you would like is, first off, the more automated those tools can be, uh, the better it is. So there's packages out there uh, that you know people can key in. You know whether it's shipment level details or package level details, uh, and then that'll transmit the EDI basis. Um, what you would like is you'd like your WMS to be able to be programmed with those rules that meet each specific um, uh, requirement on a on a case by case basis, so that when that last item is picked or that last box is packed and the pallet is shrunk wrap and boom out goes the shipment you would just like those EDI requirements to automatically um, uh, be sent together and then pushed on over. Okay we'll probably take one more question because we'd like to wrap up pretty soon we've got about four minutes left one of the questions uh, that just came in what skill sets have you seen in a warehouse champion? Um, <laughs> You know, leadership requires a person that is uh, open to new ideas, uh, that can embrace in the goals, that uh, probably, uh, you know, uh, is able to share those goals, and, and they feel that those goals are being share, uh, shared as well. But they're open to, to new, idea, new ideas in the, day of a life, in the day of a life of a warehouse worker. Um, uh, good leadership, um, you know, they know how to listen. Uh, they know how to... Uh, you know, uh, get across what the goals is, the reason for the goals, but then also being open to the feedback that's coming back from the people on the floor. It's kind of like, hey, this, you know, this is a fantastic goal, but you know, instead of doing it the way that you're asking it, have you considered doing it this this other way? And uh, so, being able to, you know, be open and, and use the ideas that are coming from other people as well uh, is a, is a key piece of that. Great. All right. I've enjoyed the opportunity to uh, talk today, share this information at this point. Rebecca, I'd like to turn it right back over to you. Fantastic. Uh, and I'd like to take the time to wrap up today's webinar and to thank Keith for taking us through some pretty innovative examples of how smart distributors use their WMS to deliver a better customer experience. Thank you for joining our session. Be sure to check out the custom link that we've provided just for webinar attendees today. We look forward to reconnecting at TED Connects or on a future webinar. What you're looking at on the screen is the custom link that I'm talking about. I'm sending it to you in uh, the chat box as well, so you'll have it there. Keith, if you'd advance the next slide. If you're uh, three hours from now, if you're looking fondly back on this webinar and you wondered um, <laughs> where to go for that information, this is our landing page. You get there by going to pathguide.com. If you click on the Explore More button, that will take you to our Content Marketing Hub where you can access the assets in the custom link that we provided and many more assets. Any other questions? Well, with that, I think we'd like to wrap things up. Hey, Rebecca, if you don't mind, I'm going to take a quick minute and um talk about the WMS meeting that's going to be going on, and I'll bring it up on my screen here. Okay, that's great. So this is right off of the agenda tab for uh, Tug Connects, and the WMS meeting is going on from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. 
Um, a lot of this, a lot of this agenda is going to be about TWL, but a fair amount of it is also going to be about uh, generic uh, warehouse management systems and uh, and related topics. And you can see we've got quite a few people signed up for it already. But here's the agenda. I encourage you to go online and take a look at it. And if you haven't signed up for it and it looks good, please do so. All right. Thanks so much uh, for for attending, everybody. And I hope you all have a great day.